I'm Helen Light, and uh, in the uh, studio today, I've got a guest, and I'm trying to do this on a, uh, a fairly regular basis, bring folks to uh, come in and talk about their music. And so, Happy Rhodes is in town, and she uh, agreed to stop by and say hello. Hello, Happy. Hi, Helen. Uh, nice to see you. Thanks. And uh, I know I haven't gotten to, no one really got to say anything about your show because you came in before the show when you were just here in March. Mm -hmm. But the response that we got was just incredible. So I just want you to know that everyone was just like thrilled to death with Happy Roads in concert. And uh, when we first mentioned that you were going to re-release all of your previous material that was on cassette, they were very excited about that also. So that's one of the reasons you're in town, because you've put out on compact disc a right. catalog Right. Which is amazing to me because a year ago, Happy Roads was just one album, War Paint. Right. And now there is a, an entire library there, probably as big as the Doors at this point. Is that right? As big as the Doors. <laughs> the Doors catalog, Genesis. I w <laughs> oh, I'm sure. At yeah. least as big. <laughs> so uh, people are going in and purchasing the album. You have, uh, I was listening to them all last night. And I thought maybe it would be a little bit easy if we described a little bit about some of the albums. And when listening to them last night, I realized that and this is not hard to realize, but you were acoustic. Mm -hmm. And so you started out with the guitar. Did you take formal training on guitar? No, I never had any formal training on anything. Um, I think uh, the thing with me is that I'm, I'm a songwriter and a vocalist, but I'm not an instrumentalist. And I think I could have been because I picked up the guitar at age 11, but I never really excelled very far on it. I, I can get by. But it's, uh, if that were really important to me, I think I would have done that. But it doesn't seem to be. Um, my main interest is basically writing music and getting thoughts out, getting certain atmosphere onto tape. And the, so the first two albums were basically with a guitar. When did you decide that the keyboard was another one of your, and the synthesizer was another way, another outlet for you? Uh, I think I knew that before I, I knew about acoustic guitar. Oh, really? Yeah, because one of the first albums that I ever heard was played by my father when I was very young, and it was switched on Bach which was by Walter Carlos, now Wendy. And um, that uh, it really intrigued me. It was such an incredible mix of classical music with weird electronic sounds. And of course, I was a child. You know, I, I had no idea what it was, but yeah. it was the most fascinating thing I had ever heard. And I, I think I really, maybe not consciously, but s some part of me knew that that's the kind of sound that I would lean toward that uh, in later years. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get my hands on electronic instruments until a certain time. Before yeah. that, I had acoustic guitar. So I banged everything out on the acoustic guitar. That's why the music sounds the way it does. When you did the first, so when you did the first album, what about did you put this together, the first project? Uh, well, Begin writing for it. From the time I started writing music, which I started writing music probably as early as 11 years old, mm -hmm. but good, you know, semi-decent songs by the time I was around 14. Um, that material specifically was written between the ages of. I'd say 16 and and 18, and and after that. Now this song, I know, uh, Wretches, you did in concert Yeah. when you were in town. Right. Anything in particular influencing this, or just one of those? Why I would choose that song, you mean, to do live? Um, I think feedback on people through the years that it was a particular favorite, certainly. Um, I happen to like it. And also because I wanted to integrate, uh, this, this show was very um, band-oriented. And for those people who, are, who were, at the time, so familiar with my back catalog, um, I wanted to include some acoustic stuff, you know, because um, they have their favorites, too. And uh, Wretch is just uh, is an easy one to do. I wanted to break down the band and do something just with me and mm -hmm. maybe the girls singing and whatever. So okay. it's a good tune. How about a taste of Rhodes? This is Happy Rhodes, Volume 1. And Wretches here at 88.5. At 88.5 WXPN, as we uh, take a look at Happy Roads Volume 1, Wretches Gone Awry, Happy Roads with us today, giving uh, a little brief summary of what Happy Roads is all about, and I'm sure we'd all like to know, and we're never going to find out. I just want to know, Happy. Yeah. Are you, are you told me your, your brother named you Happy right. when you were a baby, mm -hmm. and you were a happy baby. Yes. And then obviously from the material, we'd have to be deaf not to know you weren't 
during periods of your life. <laughs> but just baby is the key word here. I think uh, a few years after that, it kind of went downhill. Now, you, you're so bubbly and shiny. Is it all because of Kevin? No, no, no. Oh, Don't well. ever use the word bubbly. <laughs> oh, no, you're not Wrong bubbly. word. <laughs> she's, she's not bubbly at all. Is that right, Kevin? Tough. <laughs> she's a tough cookie, but she's smiling. And, and that does that mean you went back into the happy, you, you now fit I'm, the name of happy? I'm very joyous. You're, you're, very excited to be alive. Oh, good. That makes us happy, you Good. see. Now, uh, obviously, you're, we're going to talk a little bit about you're working already on project number six and the various influences, I guess, on that, uh, the new work that you're doing. The cover of the album, I've had some calls this morning. You've already run over to 21st Century Sound and Tower Records to purchase the entire catalog. And you had mentioned to me last night that you kept a cover of your cassettes. Right. You tell the story. Well, we had been releasing this material as, as long ago as 1986, and um, it was through mail order only. It was also cassette only. And um, the covers that are on the CDs are the original covers, um, only they've been manipulated a little. The artwork itself was the original cover for the cassettes when we originally released them. And a lot of people would write saying, when you release the new CDs, will you have the same artwork? Or, I mean, I don't think I ever remember anybody saying, oh, please keep the, <laughs> the old artwork. But they were at least curious. And I did want to keep the old artwork because mm -hmm. uh, it, it's kind of um, nostalgic in a way. Mm -hmm. I just, I wanted to keep it. I wanted to remain true to that at all costs. So what I did, I just uh, designed it a little differently. But it is your artwork. It is my artwork. And she did it as a, you did it as a youngster? Yeah, the paintings themselves on, on Ecto, Volume 1 and Volume 2, those are all paintings. And uh, those were done between the ages of uh, uh, 17 and 19, I would say, roughly. One, the, the picture on Volume 1 was done on the side of a motorcycle. It was actually done on the saddlebag of a motorcycle, and it's probably flying <laughs> around somewhere in Albuquerque now. Wow. <laughs> oh, that guy, I want to see that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other ones came from? The other ones were just on, I, I have them, they're on canvas, they're just canvas paintings at home, and sitting at home, collecting dust. And you decide, and I also found out that you were into science fiction, so that has something to do, some influence with what you do. Right, it has a lot to do with it. I mean, I have um, a tendency to, to lean toward science fiction anyway, and fantasy, and the, and the abstract, and surreal, and uh, um, kind of mixing my genres there. Um, but also, um, they're guardians for me, and that's something that people find hard to identify with. The monsters are f my friends, um, and uh, that's why... Uh, they're, they're not monsters to you, I guess. Exactly. They're just, I treat them as guardians, and obviously they don't frighten me. They came out of my brain, and, you know, I know my brain pretty well, so. So there you go. They just kept calling, and I said, okay, we'll find out the true story behind these covers. That's why they're part of it, and hopefully the next cover will be a, a picture of you or something. Have you been thinking about the next cover? The next cover, yeah. I've got a, um, I've got a, a she wants to, it has to be a picture of Kevin is what I'm told just now. Yeah. Her producer. Yeah. <laughs> wants a picture of him on the cover. Well, that'd be a nice looking cover. I think I'm going to have some yeah, uh, cause he really, input into this. He really wrote all the material and sang it all anyway, so I'm just... <laughs> I, I, that deep the, voice. I know it. My son girl. said it was a guy. I knew it was a guy. <laughs> well, now that, going to Happy Roads 2, this is a Let Me Know Love. I'm not, and it definitely has a feel of Kate Bush. Are you... Anyway, have you gotten into Kate Bush at all? Or? Big, big Kate Bush fan, and it and it shows, and you know, so 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 me, I sound like her. <laughs> so it shows. So here we go, at 88.5 WXPN, Happy Roads. You can't miss the uh, the sound of uh, Happy Roads now these days. Here at 88.5 WXPN, that's from uh, Roads Volume 2, Let Me Go Love, here at WXPN. I'm Helen Light, and we've got Happy Roads with us today. Uh, war paint seemed to be, but maybe it wasn't, I don't know. Everyone's interpreting your music in a different way, and I guess that's a tribute to what you do. I mean, people can relate to different songs in different ways, and sometimes I... Uh, I think they, they listen to it and say, oh, there's not just me that feels this way. I'm not all alone. Right. Uh, when you did the war paint, were you more positive? Do you feel like that was a more positive point in your life? Right. It was more positive um, primarily because I wasn't focusing so much on, on uh, the horrible aspects of my life, what I thought were the horrible aspects of my life. 
Um, I just, you know, basically gradually learned that, um, you know, I had control over things, over my existence in general, and um, and started looking outward. You know, mm -hmm. there comes a point in your life when you got to stop, you know, being self-pitying and looking at yourself. And I started looking outward, and I, and uh, I think life is one big adventure, just waiting to be explored. And it's it's a lot better when you look at it that way. What's influencing Happy Roads for Volume Six? Uh, phew, that's hard to say. Everything, I, every single thing influences me. So uh, anything I see on the nightly news, um, you know, a child walking down the street, uh, anything. So I read that you had the Ann Coulson interview, which sticks in my mind because I think she did a, a wonderful job yeah, in painting a picture of an artist. I think it's rare that you're able to read a review. And that, I mean, I loved your album before. There was a, no doubt in my mind that. I thought you were wonderful. So then I read the review, I connected in a different way, and then I saw the show, and then there was this three-part thing that was going on with me, and I think a lot of people had the same, same effect. You know, they, they loved the, the album and then the show, I mean, the, the article. Um, and I read in there, you, you watch Oprah. Is that a part of your day? You know, every once in a while, <laughs> I just happen to be home at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> And I don't. I don't look at my watch and make a point to get the, get out the crackers and sit down with hope. <laughs> but I, I use that as an example. That's a, yeah. you know that was a joke when yeah. I when, when I said you, it. Okay. Of course I didn't. I didn't go ha ha afterwards, so nobody really knew. But yeah, that's important. Occasionally I watch Oprah. Okay, <laughs> we've so got I that. We've got that all all cleared up. When uh, working on rearmament, um, you seem to get more. Uh, like I said, the synthesizer working on that project. Did you take, you didn't take keyboard lessons, I guess, either? No. Just did it, I huh? think that's pretty apparent. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I couldn't sit down at a keyboard and turn music. I mean, it just wouldn't happen for well, me. Obviously, today's it's keyboards, talent. today's keyboards, you pretty much can. Try me sometime. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll do a Helen Light song <laughs> one time in your studio, Happy, and you'll be, you'll be, have more confidence in what you do there. Uh, you, you also performed, I believe, I'm trying to remember the songs you did in, in concert, but I think this was one of them from Rearmament. Uh, you did Perfect. Irony. Irony, yep. So I thought maybe we'd give a, give a listen to that one. Once again, she's going to be at 21st Century Sounds. She being Happy Rose, if you want to stop by and say hi to her, and I'm sure you want to. She'll be there at 3 o'clock when I release her from here at 88.5 WXPN. <laughs> 88.5 WXPN. That's the perfect irony from Rearmament, the music of Happy Rose. That's volume 3 in her collection that she's finally released. They've been talking about it for a while, but it finally has come out. And uh, going over different things, listening to the music. I'm just, just curious, did you ever listen to Tubular Bells at any length? No, but uh, somebody has compared me. Really? Yeah. Because I listened to that album like so many times, don't ask me why, but really? uh, I did. And when I heard a couple of things on the album last night, I thought, oh, that has a little bit of the Tubular Bells feel, and I wasn't sure if that had any Real, you know, effect. Mm -hmm. No? Hmm, that's interesting. Pink Floyd? Yeah. Pink Floyd do you yeah. like? Yeah. See, I, I know fan. why we, I like you so much, because I like so much of your... Yeah. I mean, I like, like the, the same, same artists. Music. Yeah, yeah, just the same thing. I know you like Peter Gabriel. Yeah. So can't, we want to get Peter Gabriel and you on the same bill. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, I'd, I'd die. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you, did you perform uh, acoustically anywhere before when you were just writing? Have you ever been a performer in the area? No, I, I, a couple of times I went up to Cafe Lena in Saratoga, which is a pretty famous place. Um, I think uh, Bob Dylan played there. A lot, of, a lot of different people played there a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I was just doing open mic night type things, you know. And um, I was about 17 years old, scared out of my wits, wore sunglasses and a hat on stage. That sounds like my style. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I only did that uh, a few times. And shortly thereafter, I went right into the recording studio. So I just kind of like skipped over that stage of performing. When you then came to Philadelphia, yeah, that was one of your uh, first or one third? One of whatever. them, yeah, one of the first performances yeah any plans to come back in the near future uh, in the near future well yeah I mean shortly after the new year mm -hmm. I would say uh, people can probably see us flying by this area again um, it was a great time when we were here I really enjoyed it and I loved the room so um, you know we'll see what we can do not in the same hall probably but uh, the same band 
Do you still work with those guys? Because uh, that was wonderful. Yeah, right now I'm, I'm still working with them, and they've all got projects of their own that they're dealing with uh, because we're not. I'm working on something else now, but uh, they're all kind of basically ready and waiting for the next time I go out. So I, I think there might be an addition of a percussionist, another vocalist and a percussionist on the next time around if we find somebody qualified. That fits in with right. everything you're doing. When did Kevin become part of uh, your works? Uh, let's see, uh, probably around uh, early 1985. Mm -hmm. We met in the studio that we were both working out of. I was recording my stuff with, without the intent of releasing it, just getting it down on tape. And uh, he was in doing something else. I think he was uh, um, mixing one of his albums. Um, he's got about, oh, geez, I don't know, nine or ten or eleven albums to his own right of <laughs> instrumental music. And um, he, uh, the engineer there, had played some of my material for Kevin, and, and Kevin really liked it. Likewise, when I was there alone, the engineer had played me some of Kevin's music. Oh, matchmaking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think that was his no. intention, but... <laughs> Yeah, and I, I really liked it, and eventually we, we met, and um, Kevin, you know, suggested that I, he asked me to play with him uh, live, just do one or two songs live in this club in the area, and uh, I, I said, okay, okay, I was just a kid, I said, whoa, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, from that point on, basically, we just started working together. We worked pretty well together. Yeah. On oh, Warpaint, he had input, does he take your songs, and you go with a finished product, or does he then become... Well, with with war paint, what the deal was basically, I I would uh, I would get a demo version of the song. I'd get it recorded as close to the final sound as I can get it, mm -hmm. because I'm obviously pretty particular about you know what the final sound should be. So I'd get it as far as I can, and I would hand it over to him. At that point, he cleans up tracks. He um, adds what's missing. He has arrangement ideas. Um, he makes the percussion neater, mm -hmm. more tasteful. Um, just all those different things overall, plus he plays uh, some of the instrumental parts, guitars and so on. So, so it's a big part of what's going on right now. Oh, a big part, 50%. And so in the next project you're doing basically the same thing. I know you're writing right now mm -hmm. for your new right. unnamed album. Right. And you have all the material together and you're working on it. Right. And we're looking for something like that in January? Uh, that's when you're looking for that's it. that's the goal okay that's the goal January if I were to say to you what song would you cover if you had the opportunity to cover a song on an album what would you pick another you know right well there were two songs that I actually considered doing cover versions of it's absolutely insane to get permission these days um, especially if you're a Queen fan now I was going to attempt to do uh, in the lap of the gods revisited from Sheer Heart Attack. I think it's from Sheer Heart Attack by Queen. And I made a demo version of it, and uh, I thought better of it. It seemed like a lot of work to do it, and what with the passing of Freddie Mercury recently, I didn't want to be opportunistic. I didn't, you know, I wanted yeah. to I, I wanted to give it a little piece first. Yeah. And Queen is out there, and I'm very thankful to that. In everybody's ears right now, they're, all their old stuff's coming back, and it's just absolutely great. I didn't want to clutter it up with another, right. you know, also, I would uh, consider doing Soul Love by David Bowie off of the Ziggy Stardust album because I'm a big fan of David Bowie. I love his voice, and I just love that song. So there are two covers that just met. So she's got something. I'm not hold going of. to. No, they're <laughs> probably not going to be on the Maybe new album. Maybe on her next tour. She'll you do asked it. me consider. <laughs> consider was the word you I used. I know. I'm only joking. <laughs> just joking. Uh, the I guess one my favorite album of the four that have just come out is Ecto. I guess because it's closest to War Paint. Not that I'm not into the other ones, but I guess I keep yeah, listening sure, to right. this one. I don't know. I got the cassette, and Kevin Bartlett sent it to me, and I listened to it maybe 15 times because it was that cassette thing. It flips and flips and flips. So um, I got into the album. What can I say? Uh, one of the songs on it that I really like is Poetic Justice. So I thought we'd... Uh, this is from Ecto. Happy Roads in town today, and she'll be a 21st Century Sound, so you can stop on by there around 3 o'clock and say hello to her at 88.5. And that's from Ecto and Poetic Justice here at 88.5 WXPN, the music of Happy Roads for you this afternoon. A special treat for me. I'm a big fan of Happy Roads, and uh, I'm really proud to have her come in and share her music because it just it deserves to be heard. Of course, uh, War Paint came back uh, about a year ago, and uh, uh, it, everyone just kind of fell in love with Happy Roads. But the song Feed the Fire 
was the song that uh, did it for Happy, and I think made you a name in Philadelphia. Obviously, this is it's so neat because you know Genesis and those kind of bands break out in in a Philadelphia, and now it's nice to know that uh, we're able to help you uh, just get some groundwork. Obviously, you're in the beginning stages of of what's going on, but I you know I know yeah. a lot well, of things. Well, it's been incredible. It's been an amazing uh, breaking of ground. In so to say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, w when you did Feed the Fire, anything in particular uh, that spurred on the song? I understand there's yeah. some Ellie. I, I, actually, I was listening to Ricochet by David Bowie over and over. <laughs> and I was li certain songs hit me, you know. And I was listening to ta uh, a, a song by Anderson Wakeman, Bruford Howe. Um, big, I'm a big Yes fan. And um, it, it just... I, I was in such heaven, and I said, I'm going to write a song about this, because there's nothing like music in the whole world, for me anyway, and I know for a lot of people, it moves me to no extent, it just makes me feel like nothing else. And I wanted to pay homage to all those people who are able to do that for me, lots of different artists. And this is the song that That's, resulted in yeah. that. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Happy Roads, as I said, will be a 21st Century Sound in just a little bit. She'll be there from 3 until 5, and they're located at 846 Lancaster Avenue in Bryn Mawr. Go on over, say hi. And as we've said throughout the course of this program, she's got her uh, first four projects out. We're looking forward to volume number six. Thanks, Happy. Thanks. At 88.5 WXPN, Happy Roads.